welcome to our channel. This podcast will make your English from okay to good and from good to great. I am Sam Goodbody, your host for this podcast. Today's episode is for beginners and intermediate learners. You will hear the same text at a beginner level and an intermediate level. The name of the episode is Why You Must Read. This video contains the full text, as well as my conversation before it. So you probably noticed that I said text instead of story today. That's because today's episode is going to be a bit different. Why you must read, beginner level. Why do I need to read in English? My students often ask me this. They think I go to classes. I do my homework. I watch films in English. Why should I read books? Actually, reading is the best way to improve your English. I will tell you why. First, reading is extremely important right now. In 2006, only one out of every 100 people attended university. Now seven out of 100 people attend university. All jobs require more reading and writing than 100 years ago. This holds true for everyone. It makes no difference whether you work in an office or as a mechanic. Second, reading is the most effective way to improve your speaking, writing, vocabulary, and grammar. It will not improve your listening skills, but it will enhance your vocabulary. And having a better vocabulary allows you to listen more easily, which improves your listening skills. In school, you probably read lots of English. You probably read boring textbooks and stories with exercises at the end. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about reading for pleasure. That means reading a book you enjoy because you enjoy it. You are not reading because your teacher said read this book. You are not reading because you think I should read this book. You are reading because you want to. In 1965, they did an experiment in schools in America. These schools were for boys who had done crimes. For example, some of them stole things. They gave some of the boys free books. They were fun books like James Bond. They said, you can do what you want. You don't have to read the books. But the boys did read the books. They read a lot of books. Some boys read a book every two days. After two years, they gave the students a test. The students who got the books got better at reading and writing, and they liked school more. The students who did not get the books did not get better at reading and writing. Actually, some of them got worse. This isn't just true for native speakers. They also did an experiment on students learning English in the Fiji Islands. They used three ways to teach. The first way was normal English teaching. They did grammar classes, exercises, and so on. The second way was reading in silence. The students read books in class. The third way was reading together. The teacher read books to the students. After a year, the two methods of reading were the best. They fared much better than the students who took regular English classes. They repeated the experiment in Singapore. The students who read in silence did exceptionally well. They performed the best on grammar tests. Other students took grammar classes, but they performed worse on grammar tests. In regular classes, we attempt to remember grammar and vocabulary. We naturally learn things while reading. Perhaps you're thinking, when I read in English, it's too difficult. I have to use the dictionary all of the time. It is boring. I can't do it. I understand. Maybe you're thinking, fairy tales are for children. I need useful vocabulary. I need to learn about business and science. That can't be fun. Actually, the vocabulary in these stories will be useful. McQuillan did an experiment where he looked at vocabulary in 22 novels. 85% of the words were on academic word lists. These are lists of words that you need to know to study at university. 
and Rogers also did an experiment. They said, if students read a million words of science fiction, will they learn important science words for studying at university? The answer was yes. So yes, fairy tales are useful for you too. When I learned about all this, I found it hard to believe too. But I like to try new things. And I love learning languages. So in 2017, I decided to do an experiment. I had wanted to learn Spanish for a long time, but I didn't learn much in normal classes. I said, I will read a million words in Spanish. Afterwards, I will see what my level is. A million words is about 20 novels, so it was a lot of work. I started with very easy reading like this book. Then I started reading translations of books that I knew in English. For example, I have read Harry Potter and Game of Thrones in English, so I read them in Spanish. Finally, I started reading new books in Spanish. I read Latin American authors, writers like Isabella Lendi, Luis, Jorge Boris, and Manuel Puy. I adored them. I also listened to podcasts. But I always read the transcripts and incorporated the words into my goal. After I finished reading a million words, I wrote and communicated with native speakers. I was at the intermediate level. I could understand almost everything I read, hear people when they spoke clearly, and hold conversations. And I'd spent most of my time reading rather than speaking. In one year, I learned more than most students learn in five years. I didn't try to remember grammar and vocabulary. I learned them naturally. Maybe you're thinking, I don't believe this. Or maybe you're thinking, wow, I'm going to read for hours every day. But I have to say something very important. You must read books that are easy. You must read books that are fun. If a book is too difficult or too boring, put it down and find another one. Stephen Krashen, an expert in language teaching, says only read things in English that are fun and interesting. Read things that are really easy that you wouldn't read in your native language because they are too easy. So you can read comics, magazines, detective stories, romance stories, and so on. Don't feel bad about reading translations. If you read very easy books when you see a word you don't know, you will understand the meaning easily. You won't have to use a dictionary. So what is easy? Experiments show that you should understand at least 98% of the words in a text. 98%? That's so high. I know. But let me show you an example. Here's a text where 10% of the words are not real words. So you should understand 90% of the words. Jerry flourished out of bed and opened the curtains. He bumped to himself as he made breakfast. He made coffee and put butter on his puffer. Someone called his phone and he picked it up. He was very surprised by who was torn gling. So as Venki fell on the floor, is that easy to understand? Could you read a whole book of that? Here's the same text but only 2% of the words are not real. So you should understand 98% of the words. Jerry jumped out of bed and opened the curtains. He sang to himself as he made breakfast. He made coffee and put butter on his toast. Someone called his phone and he picked it up. He was very surprised by who was calling. So his venki fell on the floor. How was that? You probably didn't understand everything, but it was more fun to read than the first text. That's why reading for pleasure is so great. Maybe you don't understand everything, but you understand enough to follow the story, and you don't have to pick up a dictionary. So if you find that this book is too hard, read something easier. If you find it boring, read something more fun. I know that not everyone likes my writing, and that's okay. Find a book that is good for you. When we have fun, we learn much more. Because I want this book to be fun. 
It has no exercises in it. I thought about adding them after each story, but I don't think it's a good way to spend your time. Instead, you should read more Read for Pleasure. If you finish this book, you can try the level above. Because you already read the stories, you will know them well, and it will be easier to understand. But maybe when you finish this book, you will love stories. Happy reading and happy learning. I hope you enjoyed the beginner level version. Now I'll just explain some words that are in the intermediate level text. Proficiency means skill. Usually we use the word proficiency to talk about language skills. If you have a high level of proficiency in English, it means you can talk and write English very well. When you train your ear, you try to make your ear better at hearing different sounds. Usually, there are two ways you can train your ear. You can train your ear for music so that you can hear the difference between different musical notes better. Or you can train your ear for language so that you can listen better in that language. A juvenile delinquent is a young person. A juvenile who has done crimes. A delinquent. Juvenile delinquents do not go to prison as they are not adults. Instead, they go to juvenile delinquent reform centers, which are places centers to help make these people better to reform them. When you replicate a study, you take an academic study that has already happened and do it again, but in a different place. The idea is that you keep all the conditions the same to see if you get the same results when you replicate the study. If a study has been replicated many times with the same results, then scientifically we can say that this idea has been proven or disproven. When you memorize something, you force yourself to remember it. There are numerous ways to memorize information. One method is to repeat it several times to yourself. Another approach is to envision an image or a picture that goes with it. To be honest, people frequently try to memorize words when learning a language. But this is a very bad way to learn words because you will forget them within a few months. Second language acquisition is the scientific study of how humans learn languages. Second languages are those that are not your native or first language. And acquisition refers to the process of acquiring or learning. The field of second language acquisition contains a wealth of important research for language teachers like myself. When you say that there is no shame in doing something, it means that you should not feel shame. You should not feel bad for doing it. For example, many people worry about making mistakes when speaking a language, but there is no shame in making mistakes. Making mistakes is a natural part of learning a language, so we shouldn't feel shame for doing it. When something is comprehensible, it means you can easily understand it. When I teach, I work hard to make sure that I am comprehensible to the students that the students can easily understand me. Hopefully today's episode will be comprehensible to you. Don't sweat it means don't worry about it. For example, if one of my students says, I'm really sorry, miss. I tried really hard to complete my homework by today, but I ran out of time. Can I have more time to do it? I would say don't sweat it. Take as long as you need. When you contradict something, you say the opposite of it. You say something against it. For example, if you tell your children don't smoke, but then you go outside and smoke a cigarette. You're contradicting yourself. I actually humans contradict ourselves very often. Okay, so listen and enjoy. Why you must read. Intermediate level. Why do I need to read in English? I get this question a lot from students. They argue that as long as they're going to classes doing their homework and watching films in English, there's no need to sit down with something as boring and old-fashioned as a book. Well, to put it simply, they're wrong. In fact, reading is the best thing you can do to learn English. 
and I'm here to tell you why. Firstly, reading skills are more important than ever, whether that be in English or your native language. In 2006, only 1 in 100 people went to university. Now it's 7 in 100. All jobs from office workers to mechanics require far more reading and writing than a century ago. The competition is higher and readers win. Secondly, reading is the best way to improve proficiency in English overall. Yes, you heard me right. Reading will improve your speaking, writing, vocabulary, and grammar far more efficiently than any other method. It won't improve your listening skills, but it will give you the vocabulary necessary to train your ear quickly. But it's not just any reading we're talking about. In school, you probably read lots in English, boring textbooks and stories with exercises at the end. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about reading for pleasure. That means reading a book because you enjoy it, not because your teacher told you to, not because it's what you're supposed to read to improve your English. No questions, no book reports, just pure pleasure. Yeah, right. You're probably thinking that's too good to be true. Let me show you. In 1965, an experiment was carried out in juvenile delinquent reform centers in America. One group of the students were given free books. They made sure they were exciting books that would appeal to young boys such as James Bond. But unlike most reading programs, they were not required to read the books. They were simply given them. They could throw the books away, give them back, or draw on the pages and nobody would punish them for it. But the boys did read them. They read a lot of them. Some of them read a book every two days. After two years, they tested the students. Their attitude toward school improved significantly, in addition to their reading and writing skills. However, the students who are not enrolled in this program remain the same. In fact, some of them worsened during the two years. This is not limited to native speakers either. A study of English as a second language. ESL students in the Fiji Islands examined three methods. Traditional English teaching. Sustained silent reading. Reading in silence for an extended period of time. And a more conventional reading program in which teachers read aloud to the students. By the end of the first year, Students taught with the two reading methods had a 15-month advantage in English ability, compared to the 6.5 months of the traditional method. When the study was replicated in Singapore, the students who did only sustained silent reading did better on grammar tests than the students who had taken only grammar classes. When we do grammar exercises, we try to memorize the rules of the language. When we read, we absorb them. But I know what you're thinking. That's all well and good. But when I pick up a book in English, it's too hard for me. I get bored of looking up words, and I give up after a few minutes. That's why I wrote this book. It is designed to make you fall in love with reading by providing fun, familiar stories that are easy to understand. The stories gradually increase in difficulty and length so that you can feel a sense of progression and success at the end. What you're thinking fairy tales. But those are for kids. I need useful vocabulary about business and science and technology. There's no way to make that fun. The thing with language is, there isn't such a big difference between important language and fun language. We use a wide range of words when talking about technical topics, as well as chatting with our friends. A study by McQuillan examined vocabulary and 22 novels and found that they included 85% of words on academic word lists, roles, and Rogers found that if a student read a million words of science fiction, they would acquire many of the technical words required for a science degree. So yes, 
reading fairy tales will help your English in all areas, even for academic purposes. As an English teacher, I've seen many times that the students who do the best are those who read the most for IELTS for university, for business, or just for travel. Reading is the factor that predicts success. But I understand if you're still unsure. When I learned about all this, I was too, but I like to experiment, and I have a passion for learning languages. So in 2017, I decided to test this theory. I had wanted to learn Spanish for a long time, but aside from struggling with Duolingo and not really learning anything, I hadn't made a serious attempt. I set myself a goal. I would read a million words in Spanish and see what my level was afterwards. A million words is roughly 20 standard length novels, so it was a huge task. I started with very easy resources, like transcripts of podcasts for learners, but I avoided anything that felt too much like work. Once I'd learned the basics, I started reading translations of books that I knew in English, such as Harry Potter and A Song of Ice and Fire. You might know it as Game of Thrones. Finally, I was ready to move on to completely new books, and I fell in love with Latin American authors such as Isabel Allender, Luis Jorge Bot Haz, and Manuel Puig with the reading. I also listened to podcasts, but I always read the transcripts and counted the words as part of my reading. After I achieved my goal, I tested myself by writing and talking to native speakers and found I was at a decent intermediate level. I could understand almost everything I read, understand clear speech, and have conversations at a comfortable level. Even though I had barely spoken the language since I started learning, I had been learning for about a year, and I had made more progress than most students make in five years. I did not memorize the vocabulary or grammar rules, I absorbed them. You're either thinking this is all complete nonsense, or you're super excited and ready to start reading for hours a day. However, the following point is critical. You must read easy books. You must read books that are enjoyable. If a book is too difficult or boring, put it down and try another one. Stephen Krashen, an expert in the field of second language acquisition, says, Read only material in the second language that is genuinely fun and interesting material, that is so easy that you probably feel guilty reading it in your primary language. This is your excuse to read comics, magazines, detective stories, romances, etc. There is no shame in reading translations. Ideally, you want to be reading a book so easy that when you see a word you don't know, you can understand the meaning from context. Research has shown that in order for this to happen, the text needs to be at least 98% known words. 98%. That's so high. I know, dear reader, but let me show you an example. Here's a text where I've replaced 10% of the words with nonsense words. That is, it's 90% comprehensible. Jerry flourished out of bed and threw open the curtains. It was a beautiful day. He bumped to himself as he did his daily routine, pouring coffee and buttering puffer. But then his phone rang and the person toggling was so unexpected that he dropped his pinky on the floor. Is that easy to understand? Could you read a whole book of that? Here's the same text, but 98% comprehensible. Jerry jumped out of bed and opened the curtains. It was a gorgeous day. He sang to himself as he went about his daily routine, pouring coffee and buttering toast. But then his phone rang, and the person calling was so unexpected that he dropped his venki to the floor. How was that? Even if you didn't understand everything, I bet it was a lot more fun to read than the original text. And that's the beauty of reading for pleasure. 
Even if you don't understand everything, you will be able to follow the story and continue without having to consult a dictionary. So, if you find that this book is too hard, put it down and read the level below. If you find it boring, go read something else. Yes, I'm giving you permission to stop reading my book. I know not everyone likes my writing style. And that's okay. Find what works for you. As you read, focus on the meaning of the stories. And don't sweat it if you don't understand every single word. Just relax and try to get lost in the pages. Believe it or not, when we have fun, we learn far better. The levels of these volumes are based on the common European framework of reference, a system for defining language levels. You'll know them as A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. Although these books only cover up to C1 level, if you're an A1 level, you probably need more guided teaching before you start reading. And if you're a C2 level, then you can start reading books for native speakers. A great strategy, if you don't feel confident about your reading ability, is to start with the beginner level of the book and reread it level by level, going all the way up to advanced. This will allow you to really absorb the new language and gradually increase the difficulty. There is not a huge difference between the intermediate level stories and the advanced level stories, but even rereading the same story twice can be very effective. We need to repeatedly encounter new words and phrases before our brain can really understand them. Finally, the book contains no exercises. I considered including them after each story, but it would contradict everything I had just told you. Reading for pleasure is the most effective way to spend your time, and exercise takes away from that. Happy reading and happy learning. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to say thank you, then express your feelings in the comment box and subscribe to our channel.